Well, Father, again, words are just so inadequate to express what is on our hearts. Because, Lord, you have been such a wonderful counselor. You've been a mighty deliverer. God, you've been so much. And you have done so much in each of our lives. And tonight we are here that you might unveil more of the preciousness of your essence within us. Lord, we're here that we might speak life to one another. That we might build the Christ in one another. We are so grateful for the day in which we are living. That the sons of God are being revealed. And all of creation will come to the knowledge of the glory of God. That every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. How grateful we are, Lord, that you brought us to that place where we can truly say Jesus is Lord. And we thank you for this weekend, for those that are here, those that will be coming. And Father, we pray for the mighty presence, the manifest presence of your Spirit to arise within us. That we might walk in the reality of all that you've placed within us. And for this we thank you. Yes. <clears throat> you know, words are always inadequate. I say all the time, I say, Lord, what more can be said? Because we've heard so much, we know so much, but yet, as we learn to just quiet this mind and just kind of sometimes sit in the quiet and listen, the Lord reveals so much. I am so thankful, you know, that we just sang that song when we started out. <coughs> Grace triumphs over judgment. And for so many years I went to church and that's mostly what I heard was how God's judgment is soon coming. <coughs> and uh, don't misunderstand me, I thank God for all of my days and all of the places where I've been. You know, I discovered some time ago that everyone is always right where they need to be right now. When I was back in my religious days, I needed to be right there at that time because God had taught me and dealt so much with me during those days. And without the, the, the grace and the mercy of God, all of us would still be under that bondage of religious darkness. Being under, going to church and hearing about judgment and the wrath of God and the fear of God. But we're learning, thank God, that grace triumphs over judgment. And yes, there is judgment. There's great judgment in our lives. But it's always a judgment unto righteousness and not guilt and condemnation. I've been learning over the years that my father is not at all religious. You know, I used to look at myself and think I was a pretty carnal being. And I'm sure a lot of people, as they get to know me, might still say, like Linda, back there in the back row. <laughs> but this guy is, is a preacher, but yet he's so carnal. <laughs> but you see, we haven't understood really what carnal is. Because religion has taught us that to really love God, that you would be somewhat reserved, that you would probably do nothing but pray and read the Bible all the time. 
Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I did that myself for years. I was called to do that, and some are, so I'm not knocking any of that at all. But I discovered throughout the years that God is not at all religious. And what we think is carnal is really, most of the time, God just enjoying humanity. <laughs> That's why you are here. You are not here to be a bunch of religious people. <laughs> you are here because God wants to inhabit humanity. This world was created not for a bunch of people to be religious, but to enjoy God and enjoy one another. Yet religion would tell you that to enjoy the world is a sinful thing. And they even quote you the scripture, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. But I'll tell you what you, you're not to love. It's not that you're not to love the world. You're not to love the age, the spirit of the age in which we live. And the, the, the spirit of the age in which we live today really is a religious age. And Paul fought that same age. In fact, he said in, in Galatians that he thanked God who had delivered him from the present evil age. And then he goes on to, dis, to uh, discuss about what he'd been delivered from. And it was the religion of his day. So thank God there is a word coming today that releases us from our religious mentality. And it's a word that will set, it is setting us so free to enjoy and to live a life of enjoyment. I say over and over again, there's only one purpose for us being here on this earth, and that's to enjoy God and enjoy one another. Yet if you're still in the religious camps, you'll only en really enjoy those who are like-minded. That's carnality. Carnality is not you having a good time. Carnality is not, you know, whatever. It's not in bowling or it's not in watching TV. It's, it's not being carnal to go to a movie. To be carnal really is to have a religious mindset that will divide you from others. That's right. Because God is one. And the scripture says that God has created from one all the nations of the earth. All of us came out of the same source. <clears throat> And the only way we get divided is when we become religious and put ourselves in a religious camp and think that we have the truth. And we like those guys over there, kind of, but you better watch it because if you associate with them, it might not be too good for you. And I can attest to, testify to that that it's true. I lost a lot of friends when I associated with Larry Howe. <laughs> really, that was a joke. <laughs> but, but I have. I've lost a, a lot of, of friends and a, and a lot of uh, minister acquaintances because I went and ministered at a New Age conference. I'll tell you what, folks, that kind of thinking, that is carnal thinking. 